Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Brooke sent me a note and said, Steve, check out the story involving civil asset forfeiture. This is good news. And, you know, the fight against civil asset forfeiture can take many forms. Obviously, if we can get the laws changed, that would be good. But if it happened to you and you filed a lawsuit because of it, if you succeeded in that lawsuit, that would help also. So that's what's happening in Nevada. And this is also the Institute for Justice working on this case. But from mynews4.com, and uh, the headline is, Lawsuit Against Nevada State Police Moving Forward After State Supreme Court Rulings. The state Supreme Court in Nevada has said this lawsuit against the state police can proceed. Lawsuit will move forward after the Nevada Supreme Court ruled, day before yesterday, that civilians can sue government officials for monetary damages when their rights under the state constitution are violated. And this has to do with civil asset forfeiture. This decision comes after the Institute for Justice uh, participated in oral arguments in the case, and the outcome of that case could impact the case of Marine Corps veteran Stephen Lara. Stephen Lara is one of the cases that got the most publicity recently. He's the guy driving down the road, got pulled over. They said, well, you're following too closely the vehicle in front of you. And they then quizzed him at the side of the road, asked to search his car, and they took his money from him, the money that he had on him, the cash. So we'll get to that in detail in a second. But that happened back in December of 2021, stopped by troopers with the Nevada State Police on I-80 just east of Sparks. After interrogating him, troopers seized his entire life savings, which was $87,000. He was not arrested. They didn't charge him with the crime. The Texas native was driving halfway across the country to visit his daughters in California. So they actually have the transcript taken from the camera worn by the trooper. The man says, that's my life savings that I've been saving since I went into the Marine Corps, which is in 2000. I've been saving for the last 20 years. Trooper says, okay, Roger, what we're going to do, I believe there's drug proceeds. The dog alerted to it. And the man says, drug proceeds, sir? Trooper says, yes, it's very common, sir. We get people that are trafficking large quantities of marijuana from Northern California to all states east, even from Reno. So you'll notice that... <laughs> The trooper's explanation falls apart the second time he opens his mouth. However, uh, the man then explained that he doesn't trust banks, which is why he's carrying the cash. The video also shows he has a stack of bank receipts accounting for the withdrawal of the cash. He had bank receipts, and that's one of the most common things people say when I do a civil asset forfeiture story. Is they say, Steve, I'm carrying cash, I'll just keep the bank receipt with me. He had the bank receipts. He showed, he goes, look, I had this on the bank yesterday or day before, whatever it was. And I took it out and here's the receipt. That's okay. Uh, I believe there's drug proceeds. So the man then says, you're taking food out of the kid's mouth. The trooper said, like I said, we believe right now that this is drug proceeds. This is illicit currency. The man says, well, I'm going to prove to you that it's not. The trooper goes, perfect. And that ended the exchange. By the way, they took every penny off of him except, I believe, $10 or $20, which wasn't enough for him to continue his drive to California. He had to call a relative and have them wire him money because they left him stranded. So his life savings were returned to him after he signed up with the Institute for Justice and they filed a lawsuit against the Nevada Department of Public Safety. His request for monetary damages, however, has been stayed. We'll get to that in a second. Attorneys for the state argue that nothing in Nevada law explicitly permitted lawsuits like this man's, and the court found unanimously that we simply recognize the long-standing legal principle that a right does not exist without a remedy for its enforcement. So if you have the right to be secure in your person, papers, things, and cash, and if someone violates that right, you must have a remedy. Otherwise, it's not a right. And that's what the Nevada Supreme Court is saying. The wheels of justice for Stephen Lara can finally move forward after being on hold for more than a year, says IG attorney Ben Field. Today's decision will have an immediate impact both locally and nationally. Nationally speaking, this decision not only strikes a blow against civil forfeiture, it also rejects the judge-made disaster that is qualified immunity. Like we urged, the Nevada Supreme Court holds that ordinary people like Stephen can sue for damages when police or prosecutors go over the line and violate the most basic guarantees in the state constitution. 
Institute for Justice will file a motion to lift the stay on this lawsuit within the next couple days. So procedurally, here's what's happening. Stephen Lara filed a lawsuit after the money was taken from him. There was a similar lawsuit working its way through the court system. When word got out that that similar lawsuit was going to get heard by the state Supreme Court, the trial court in Lara's case stepped in and said, well, we're going to put this on hold to see how the Supreme Court rules. Supreme Court has now ruled and said these cases are proper. They are allowable. Okay, so that case is going to get sent back down for trial. And now Lara's case, theoretically, presumably, is now open to proceed. So some people are going to say, but wait, Steve, I'm I'm reading between the lines here. The man had his $87,000 or whatever it was taken from him by the police the side of the road, but they gave it back. What's he suing for? Well, a couple things. First of all, you have to understand that if you can undo a wrong by simply giving something back to somebody, that doesn't incentivize them to not do it in the first place. Because if you can catch a thief and they can get away by giving the stuff back, they're just going to keep doing it. What? Oh, the worst that will happen to me is i got to give stuff back that's not mine? Oh. <laughs> Number two, when you have all your money taken from you at the side of the road and they leave you stranded to where you've got to make phone calls and get someone to wire you money, you've been harmed beyond just the taking of your cash. And so you should know that a lot of states, like I'll give you the example in Michigan, that says if you steal, conceal, or convert something that belongs to somebody else, that person can sue you for treble damages. Treble damages. And so I've actually filed lawsuits under that statute. And the interesting thing is that, for instance... I've had a situation where somebody held on to my client's car when they shouldn't have. I said, okay, you're converting my client's car to your own use. Therefore, we're going to sue you for that. We want three times the value of the car. We always have an alternative argument saying we want the car back. We want a court order to get us the car back. And I've had defense attorneys say, Steve, if you get the car back, you're not entitled to anything. And I go, why is that? They go, you got the car back. And I go, yeah, but what about the statute that says I get treble damages? They go, that doesn't make any sense if you get your car back. And I say, well, the statute was obviously intended to uh, discourage this kind of behavior. And obviously, if the law simply said you catch a thief, if they give it back, there's nothing you can do about this, that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense now, would it? So this man has got a very good case to make that he was harmed, and simply giving him his money back won't compensate him for that harm, not completely. So he has the right to go to court now, and ask for damages and say, yeah, I got my money back, but it was a pain and a big, gigantic hassle, and I want something for that also. So I'm rooting for this guy, as I know that most of you are as well. And interestingly, he did get his money back. I believe he had to file the suit first, but the scary part is that they knew, at least prior to this, that if they pull you over at the side of the road, they take your money from you and you get upset, they can often say, well, we'll give you half your money back. How's that? And some people will settle. They'll settle for half their own money. Uh, but if you stick to your guns, going, I want it all back, and you file a suit and the Institute for Justice is on your side, well, then you might get it all back. But again, that doesn't make you whole. And, and so you have to proceed. So I salute the Institute for Justice for getting involved. I salute Stephen Lahr for doing this. And I feel horrible about this case in particular. I've, I've seen some really bad civil asset forfeiture cases. This is a guy who spent 20 years in the Marines serving our country. And as the officers are stealing his money, he's still addressing them as sir. And and that, to me, shows you how out of control this is. A man with 20 years of service to our country. And the police are going, well, we think this is drug money. Based on what? The dog alerted to it. Now, it'll get pointed out repeatedly in the comments below, but I'm going to say it also. Uh, Dogs alert to cash because so much of our currency contains wisps of drugs because of the nature of what it's made from. Uh, Our paper money is not paper. It's actually cloth. And it contains smells and scents for a long period of time. And so you can grab a lot of cash just out of circulation and a dog will alert to it. And of course, you can't really cross-examine the dog, can you? They say the dog alerted to it. So there you go. Crazy case, but it's a good result. And it'll be interesting to see what happens in Nevada because there was a big problem with civil asset forfeiture in Nevada in particular because so many people drive through it 
with cash. Crazy, huh? Brooks sent it to me from mynews4.com. Uh, lawsuit against Nevada State Police moving forward after state Supreme Court ruling. There you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Some people might notice that the license plates changed during the video. <laughs> I just realized that now. <laughs> because I went to look up a citation. And uh, I, I pulled the book off the shelf just to double check. And I put it back. And I realized now I switched the license plates. So hope that didn't disturb too many people out there. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Loneliness is the poverty of self. Solitude is the richness of self.